After years of paralysis, Zimbabwe is showing signs of life. The shops are open, as are the schools and hospitals. Twelve months on from the deal that saw the country's bitter political enemies enter a unity government, change is underway. We will not suffer another ten years in this wilderness of despair. The situation for the average Zimbabwean is much better because they have food, uh, they can afford basic, basic goods. Will you stand with me in the struggle to deliver democracy and freedom? Prime Minister Morgan Changarai is telling Zimbabweans that now he shares government with Robert Mugabe, the culture of fear and intimidation is being swept away. Before the inclusive government, there was fear pervading the whole society, but now it is gone. The promise of greater freedom and a recovering economy has prompted many of the three million or more Zimbabweans living in exile to contemplate returning home. I came to Joburg because the company I was working for had closed down and there was actually nothing in Zimbabwe, like no food, no work. Catherine Nwaru left her one-year-old daughter behind in Zimbabwe in search of work in South Africa. She really doesn't know her mother because all in all, I've been here for four years. It's been hard for me, really hard. I really missed home, but I thought maybe one day things are going to change, but they never really did. Word that life is improving in Zimbabwe has encouraged her to return. I'm just hoping I'll get a job. I'll try my best. As Catherine Nguaru begins her trip home, I begin a parallel journey into Zimbabwe. In the past, I had to enter the country undercover. Most foreign journalists were banned. But with a new unity government in place, Robert Mugabe has reluctantly opened the door to Western media. When they were reporting about us before, they were talking a lot of rubbish, lies. And, and naturally that offended us. Didymus Mutasa is one of President Mugabe's closest confidants. He agreed to talk to the ABC because, as he puts it, he wants Australians to know the truth. Can I ask you, what do you believe has been the cause of Zimbabwe's economic collapse? Well, the one chief cause has been the sanctions that were imposed against us by your country, Australia. Uh, most of the white um, Commonwealth countries. It's not true. The sanctions which are hurting this country are sanctions imposed by the Mugabe government on the people of Zimbabwe, you know, through their misgovernance, through violation of human rights, through, you know, um, you know, perpetration of violence. Catherine Nwaru has been living with such threats most of her life. However, she's most fearful of not being able to find a job and look after a daughter. <laughs> Catherine Nwaru quickly learns from her sister that life in Zimbabwe is just as tough as it was four years ago. It seems like she doesn't remember. <laughs> it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see my family, but I don't think there's much hope for me. Because when I talked to my sister and told her I'm going to look for a job, yeah, she was like, what kind of a job? You know, like, are you mad? Oh, we can't even talk about job creation. You can't create jobs in six months uh, where you had almost collapsed the economy. Prime Minister Changarai is desperately lobbying the international community for financial support. We can't force them to give us assistance. So we, we need the assistance, but we can't force them to give us assistance. The people of Australia are the people who are making us flop. They are the people who are causing all these ills that they refer to 
be happening in Zimbabwe, and that annoys us. Many Western nations have made it clear sanctions will stay and investment will be withheld for as long as Robert Mugabe remains leader. Is it fair to say the only real stumbling block is Robert Mugabe, as far as they're concerned? You are personalising the issue. The, no, re the, real, the real stumbling block to progress is when, when we say we have agreed to implement something and the other side of the bargain does not follow through. So don't place it on the, in the individual. Do you confront him and say, this must stop? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And what, what is his response? Well, I'll look into it. I'll look into this. I'll look into that. And to me, it's not satisfaction. It's not satisfactory because it's procrastinating. And procrastination is frustration. So we don't want that kind of relationship. Does he take you seriously? Of course he does. Morgan Changarai's belief that he and Robert Mugabe should share power equally is, according to the president's lieutenant, fanciful. Uh, Changarai takes his orders from the president, who in fact um, appointed him as uh, the prime minister. After more than 30 years, there's still no sign Robert Mugabe is prepared to loosen his grip on Zimbabwe. Until that happens, talk of change is meaningless to Catherine Nguaru. Other people here say things will only change if Mugabe goes. Yeah, if he goes completely. That's how I feel.